In one of my all-time favorite quotes, the poet Muriel Rukeyser says, the universe is made of stories, not atoms. The universe is made of stories. I think about it a little differently. I think about our lives as being a kind of vessel for conveying the stories of our ancestors. That's what each of us does, is carry stories forward from past to future. But as I connect that to the celebration of Thanksgiving, I have to wonder what happens when the stories we tell aren't true. No, I'm not talking about stories that aren't factual or aren't historical. There are plenty of wonderful stories, myths, legends that never happened but are true. The story of God creating the universe and affirming each part as good. Not historical, but true. No, I'm talking about the stories that are, in fact, lies or cover-ups that present what happened in a way that takes us away from the genuine story, that pretends that who we are is something different than the reality. And of course, the Thanksgiving story is one of those stories. If you had a childhood like mine in the United States, you no doubt grew up with the story of the pilgrims who landed at Plymouth Rock and were welcomed by natives and how Squanto and his tribe taught them how to plant in this new environment and how after getting through a long, difficult winter, they planted and succeeded and there was a harvest and everyone gathered together and celebrated and had a good time. It's a lovely story, always liked it liked it maybe better than the paper feather headdresses or paper black pilgrim hats that we dressed up in to gather together and eat instant vanilla pudding, which was what we did for some unknown reason. It never made much sense. But the problem is the story itself doesn't make sense because it isn't true. It isn't what happened. And that story that we want to claim as foundational of who we are covers up a deeper and more painful truth. The story of settlers coming to this continent is a story of devastation, of domination, of people taking what they wanted without regard for the cost to the people who are already there. It was the story of people who had a different foundational story about what it meant to succeed, what it meant to own, what it meant to belong. And so that story came at an enormous cost to the lives of the people who were here and to the stories that we tell to the ways that we are able to understand the world. Because that story of taking and winning and success blotted out, in large part, stories that were told from different ancestors about connection to the land, about obligation to one's tribe, about continuation across generations and generations of connection. The story that isn't true covers over, builds a wall on top of other stories that might be told. And of course, that's not just true of the Thanksgiving story. Most families probably have their own particular versions of that story that covers over. It might be the story of how much Uncle Joe loved to play with the kids without acknowledging the uncomfortable ways in which Uncle Joe might have touched us. 
might be the story of Aunt Jane, who was the life of the party, leaving out the part where, as Aunt Jane drank more and more, she became more and more combative. We might tell the story of the summer that we kids ran amok and leave out the part where mom was so depressed that she couldn't get up from the couch. Those stories that aren't true, those stories that are cover-ups that deny the reality, take something away. They thin our connection to our ancestors rather than allowing us to be true conveyors of the stories. It's only when we tell the true stories, even the uncomfortable stories, that there is room for possibility, for change, for penitence, for growth. Only in the true stories do those weavings across time become richer. And so perhaps the holiday of Thanksgiving might properly be a time to give thanks by telling true stories. Maybe instead of the fictional story of the first Thanksgiving, we should tell the more recent story of the water protectors who gathered in fierce and dedicated prayer to tell a story about water, how it is not just a commodity and a resource, but is instead the source of life, a connection to the sacred and to the possibility of a future for our children. We could tell our own stories, true stories, of having the courage to tell what's true. We could step forward into our own bravery, the bravery of our ancestors' real lives. Maybe the grandmother who was brave enough to leave her abusive husband and to make a new life for the people who became us. Maybe there are stories that need to be told, not simple stories, but true stories that are a blessing in their honesty, in their authenticity, in our willingness to move forward with what is real. The last line of the poem that I quoted from at the beginning, from Muriel Rukeyser, says this, Who will speak these days? if not I, if not you. The courage to speak, to tell true stories, is a blessing, and one for with which it is worth giving thanks.